Hi, I'm Neil, and I make videos about sculpting, molding, and casting. If that sounds like something up your alley, please hit that subscribe button to get all the latest content. Today's video is going to be a continuation of the Quasar project that I started a few weeks back. I'm going to be showing the entire production process of these figures. I decided that from here on out, I'm going to be focusing on what makes a particular project special. So maybe some new techniques, or just something different from the videos I've shown in the past. If you're new here, I do recommend checking out my other videos. It goes over all of my different processes. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we are beginning with the sculpture that I created in the last video. And the first thing I wanna do is insert these dowels that are gonna be used for the main vents that are gonna be used during casting. So I already figured out where I want to place them. And that's gonna be on the underside of the sculpture. So I am drilling holes carefully into the figure to insert those. And I'm putting them at the bottom of the figure because one, it's going to be the best spot for the resin flow. And two, it's in an inconspicuous spot. So, you know, it's not gonna be as noticeable. And I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to put them into place and sealing up around the edges. You always want to put your pore spouts or vents in an inconspicuous spot because there is going to be some kind of cleanup work always. And you know, you don't want that in the center of the face or somewhere that you're really going to be looking all the time. And now I'm going back and retooling some of the detail that I lost when I was drilling the holes and sealing the dowels into place. And now I am going in and adding that final cleanup work with the isopropyl mirastate slash isopropyl alcohol combo. That just smooths out the clay and gives kind of a final polish to everything. And you can see I'm kind of brushing the, the mixture over the sculpture and then retooling some of the detail, smoothing out the line work. It does a good job of cleaning up those clay crumbs that appear when you're doing texture work. This is something you definitely want to wait till the end of the sculpture to do because it can break down fine detail. And finally, adding in my signature at the end. So he is now ready for the mold box. And first I mark the seam line with a Sharpie pen along the sculpture. This is where the mold is going to be cut open. And now I am drilling holes into my foam core base. And that's where I'm going to be running the two wood dowels. Just add a little hot glue to hold them in place and then press the figure into the board. I continued the seam line onto the board there as well. That's going to be where I'm cutting when I open the mold. And I already created my mold wall with the coated cardstock rolled up with a piece of masking tape and just sealing it into place with the hot glue little last piece of masking tape to help keep the shape and now it is time for silicone. I use Mold Max XLS2 which I'm mixing up here. I degas the silicone in a vacuum chamber and then pour into the mold box as I've done here. After 24 hours it is all cured. You can peel off the mold box and get this mold cut open. Just removing the dowels first to help ease the cutting process. I am cutting in a zigzag pattern so that the mold will close together properly. Slowly moving along, following that seam line that I drew along the figure. This one gets a little bit tricky because you see I've got those loops in there that need to be cut open. So I've got kind of a second seam to follow along. Makes it easy when it's the clay model because I can just pull all, out parts of the model and cut the seam line, being able to see a little bit better. 
very good. Ready to pour the cast, which I have already done here. I didn't video the process, but I um, have already cleaned up this cast, sanded it, done a little patchwork with epoxy, and now I'm going to be polishing this figure with the use of Nuvis plastic polish and my Dremel with a felt polishing tip. I just brush the polish over the sculpture. You only need like a very thin layer of it, spread it around, and then use the polishing tool to get everything nice and finished. You only want to use the polishing tool once that you have sanded the figure down with fine sandpaper. And this is just going to move, remove the final scratches and get a really nice polished finish. You can see I, I was also using a rag to get very, very final polish. I've already marked in the seam line here, as well as a few spots where I need to drill in some vents, and the, as well as the main pore spouts, so I'm drilling this out now. One great thing about doing a junk cast like this, a waste cast, is you can figure out where your problem areas are. So all of these little holes now have vents, because I experienced uh, air pockets in the master cast. So now I know where the vents need to go to prevent those air pockets in the final cast. And just these little wires and the, the blue stick there is a, just a wax wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another mold from that. I'm using the same process as I did with the waste mold, same silicone. This will be used for my production. I'm getting it cut open here, like it out, and we'll have the nice finished mold which will produce smooth figures. Now I'm going to be creating the master cast, which is the cast I will keep on hand to create future molds from. I am using Smoothcast 305, an opaque resin with just a little bit of dye. Pour that into the mold and throw it into the pressure pot to remove all of the air bubbles. Let it cure and then it's ready to demold. And the rubber bands help keep the mold closed during casting. So I did encounter a problem here where the pour spouts did not really fill all the way, so there's holes along the back. So I need to modify this mold and create some reservoirs for the resin to sit in because I need more resin on the top to fill in those holes. So I am just using an X-Acto blade to carefully cut around the top of those sprues and I've got a nice area now that the resin can flow into and help fill in those holes. So I'm going to be creating a rainbow effect as you can see here. So powders from Mad Micas. Can just brush the powder along the inside of the mold and when I cast into this the resin will stick to the powder and that will be what the final finish looks like. These powders blend together really nicely so it's easy to create a nice gradient effect on the surface of the resin. It saves a lot of time when it comes to the painting stage. You know, now I've got this nice base to work with and don't have to paint all these rainbow colors on there. Just take a little time in the beginning to get the mold painted. So I found that using this opaque gold color worked really well as a mid-tone for all those rainbow colors. Just getting that filled up. This is Smoothcast 326, which tends to air bubble a little more than the 305, so I like to squeeze the mold and get air bubbles out as I'm casting. And here is the final cast. It worked perfectly. And once I got it all cleaned up, it's ready to paint. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint in some shadows. Just very small accents along the scales and the facial features and the mane. It's really going to add depth to this figure. Since I already added so much detail into the sculpt itself, I just want the paint to accent that detail. 
So this paint job is going to be time consuming, but it's not very complex. So go ahead and watch the painting process unfold. We finished the shading and now it's time to move on to the highlight accents. I'm going to be using a metallic gold paint to add scale details and gold tips to the scales and mane and tail tuft. This is really going to bring him to life. On the face I ended up adding some hand painted scales that weren't included in the sculpt helped really tie everything together. And you'll notice as I paint these gold details, I go back and paint over them several times. Uh, this paint is pretty translucent, so it does need several coats before it looks nice and opaque. And once again, go ahead and enjoy the painting process.
Just adding in that final detail, which is going to be the eyes, making a pearlescent white color for those. Make it a little bit different from the rest of the figure. And he is all done. Look at all that shininess. Came together so nicely. And these are actually hanging figures, so they're ornaments. So my final step was drilling a hole and adding a little hanger as well as some fishing line and you can see the finished product here. I do have these for sale on my website, both painted versions and blank ones that you can paint yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got anything out of it, I would appreciate a thumbs up, possibly a comment and or share. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.